Hello. Uh, this is about doing uh, judo in Japan. I should probably film this up in the Temple Dojo, but it's such a lovely day. I've decided to sit out by the Koi Pond. As you can see there, which is another video. Uh, I've shown the dojo in another video anyway. Um, yeah, so judo in Japan. So I'll try and make this as succinct as possible. I um, When I first came to Japan, 2003 I found out this temple Danji temple in Nagasaki uh, has a dojo at the top of it which in all the other temples I've been to since and I've been to a few that I've never ever seen another dojo so I got kind of lucky there uh, I'd, I'd done judo since I was a kid but I gave it up years later I always regretted it etc so I had the opportunity to start again and I did in 2006 when my wife and I moved here to Nagasaki in Japan and the teacher was um, the Kamada Sensei. And he was 80 years old, 79 or 80, depended on when you asked him how old he was. And uh, he'd been a um, soldier stationed on Gunkanjima nearby, the island of Gunkanjima, and he'd seen the atomic explosion. He always said, uh, he said, big noise, big light, or bright light. And um, so I started training under him. He was sixth dan, I think, I believe. He had a striped red and white belt. And uh, I got my brown belt after a while, for which he brought in this guy, fourth dan. Um, I should Maybe I shouldn't say this. I, I, in my mind, I called him the monkey man because he looked just so simian. And also, he continually broke wind. He basically pasted me around the dojo for two hours, doing all these throws and stuff. I was used as just a rag doll. And he'd say, no, hold your arm like this. No, move your leg like this. Quack. Do this. Quack. He, he was just farting just all the time. I've never known anything like it. I would have laughed, but I was just, by then I was just so knackered in pain that I, I didn't. Um, so, yeah, continued training under Nakama Sense. That was during the summer when it was just so hot up there. It was like 100 degrees. Sometimes I was physically sick, literally sick in the, the sink in the changing room, which is just off the dojo. We trained four, four evenings a week uh, for two hours. Um, he had a reputation for being very strict in a Kamala Sensei, and that um, meant he, he, he hardly had any other students. There was one um, Mario, an Italian guy, Mario, <laughs> a very nice guy, Italian guy here, since gone home, and uh, a young guy, a Japanese guy, was a black belt, who was a chef here. he come along. Other than that, he didn't, it, usually, often, it was only me. Um, and one time he had these two kids show up. I got the impression they came sporadically and he, he completely reamed them out. And he said at the time, he said, even this gaijin, which is the, the harsh foreign, the harsh Japanese word for foreigner, he gestured towards me, he said, even this gaijin comes, you know, frequently and you don't. And needless to say, I never saw them again. Um, and as it got towards autumn, he put me in for my black belt and this is something people always say, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, I believe that. But this is honest truth. I was put in for my black belt grading about a week before I was due to take it. I really hurt one leg. It swelled up. My feet were like little sausages. I had to go to the hospital and they said I had some sort of blood poisoning. And I got an injection in my leg. Um, so obviously I couldn't take the uh, black belt test. Since they pulled a few strings. And little more than six weeks later, I got a chance to retake to re, uh, not read to, to do the black belt test again um and again <laughs> in the other leg i got exactly the same problem and i wound up at the same doctor getting the same injection which is in my buttock and he said to me then he said oh, i don't think judo's for you <laughs> and it was a very stern unsmiling doctor yeah, he said judo's not for you is it um and then the uh, sensei suddenly he started as the as it changed, um, so summer here in Japan is hellishly hot and winter was just absolutely freezing. It started to get freezing cold in the dojo. We had a heater out in the dojo. Um, and Sensei just started to look really frail and he kept on calling for a break. I can say, you go, QK, QK, which means break, break. And one time he said to me, and the mats were really hard. As it got cold, they seemed to get harder, these mats to land on. And one time he, um, he told me to do kataguruma, which is where you actually hoist your, your, your opponent up on your shoulders, so they're like vertical on your shoulders, and you drop them. Um, 
so I've, I've always hated it if, if I had to do it because you, you, you fall from, you know, sometimes, what, six feet and you just break fall, but it still hurts. Anyway, he told me to do it on him and I really didn't want to do it and I said to him, are you, are you sure, Sensei? And he, he told me quite sternly to do it, just do it. So I did it and I dropped him and it obviously, he didn't land properly and it obviously really shook him up and hurt him. And, I, I, you know, again, I can still remember him. He said, today is finish. I was like, oh, you know, God. And it turned out he had leuke leukemia. He went to Tokyo basically to die because his daughter lived in Tokyo, which is his only family. And I still, he rang me up the night before he died. I spoke to him on the phone. He was, his voice was so weak, I could barely hear what he was saying. But he was still to the end telling me, like, he said, what's your footwork, your footwork, your weak, weak point? So I said, yes, sensei. And it wasn't long after that that my wife and I returned to England for three years. I kept it up, the judo, and some other martial arts, the karate and stuff at a few schools around London. Uh, long story short, came back to Japan and they got in a new teacher, um, Ozaki-sensei. Uh, he was a, um, he'd been an Olympic reservist. There was him, sensei, and a guy of about my own age, a few years older, called Fatoshi son who was a black belt. It was basically just three of us, and that was really good for the first few months. Uh, so Fatoshi son and myself were about the same level, and Zaki sensei was just, he was just insanely big and strong. I say he'd been Olympic reservist, and so it was almost like getting one-to-one -one tuition from a genuine expert. And sometimes at the end, he'd say, right, both of you are against me and I can only use one arm. And he'd still thrash us. That's how good he was. We were like, it was like being a little kid. And um, then more and more people started to come to the dojo. Other, other black belts and dan grades, second or third dans. Some politics happened and Azaki sense as well, he got, he got ill in some way, so he left. Fatoshi's son also left, and I was by then I was quite good friends with them. And this new lot, they weren't that, it wasn't that great. There wasn't a great feeling. Quite often I just wound up on the side of the tatami doing sit-ups. The new lot, they seemed reluctant to pair up with me. And it wasn't because they were like, you know, oh, scared of me or something. I'm not saying they should be, but you know what I mean? Like they were worried in some way. I mean, these were proper cauliflower-eared lumps that had been doing it since they were four or something. In fact, one of them... Um, was a 15-year-old kid who was the under-16 Kyushu champion, Kyushu being one of the main islands in Japan. And uh, he'd come in, and I, in my mind I called him Odd Job, because <laughs> he'd come in in his school uniform, and all he needed was the bowler hat, honestly. He just looked like Odd Job. And sometimes I'd go with him, and he'd kick my ass in about 15 seconds. He'd have me in some hold, or he'd just throw me down, and pummel me. And, um, yeah, so I kept on going back, but I realised by then that they, they obviously weren't comfortable with me being there. Nothing was said explicitly, it's Japan. But one of the other guys one time used the word uh, gaijin, which, you know, is the harsh way of saying foreigner. It depends how it's said. Sometimes it's just not a big deal at all. Some other foreigners, they get really precious about it. I've had it, I don't really care. Some friends of mine use it without thinking. But he, this guy used it in completely the wrong way. Like, he, he didn't say Ben, he just pointed at me and said Gaijin about something. It's just, it's just like me, if I was in England, if I'd gone, oh, you know, this, this day go here or something even worse. You know, it's that sort of level of, you know, being a twat, basically. And the thing that really did it for me, to come to this little account, was uh, I was actually placed of odd job sister who I called Big Bertha. <laughs> She was a junior black belt. I think she was a bit older, actually. She was 16. But she was a big girl. That's why I called her Big Bertha. I think she was about 14 stone. And we were cavorting around the mat. And one of these guys who'd become the teacher would replace a Zaki sense. There's about three teachers. And uh, he said, uh, no, don't go easy on her. Throw her. And I mean, I wasn't sure that I could. I mean, so she was a big girl and she was a black belt. But in the end, I managed to do some little sweep or something. And she fell on the floor. Anyway, she went hysterical. She started crying and shouting and she said, I, I've, I've, I'm defeated. She said something like, I'm defeated to this gaijin. I'm, I've been defeated by a foreigner. You know, I, I, can't, I can't bear the shame. It was this sort of full on thing. And you know, I am, because like I say, the, the teacher's a dad. I'm thinking, God, I'm going to get, you know, get my arms broken or something. 
And so I, I start full on apologising. I don't, you know, not that I should have done. I didn't want to be there, didn't want to do it in the first place. But he was like, no, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. And he was pretty chilled about it, actually. He called me Benson, which was the first. He said, you know, it's the name of the game. But that was um, the right on the wall there. She was crying away and that. And as I say, everyone else was really reticent to go for me. And there was Gaijin and that. And I just thought, I've, there's only so long you can, you know, pee against the wind, as they say. So that was the last time I went until a year or so previously. I've just started working out myself and started just putting together my own um, fitness and everything else schedule using the dojo on my own and uh, pretty much into it now that said there's a new there's a new judo teacher he's a chap of about 60 and I've spoken to him once and he seems a really nice guy and pretty he came up while I was training I said oh sorry sorry I'll stop and he said no no it's fine Karen. I'm here really early etc so he seemed pretty chill so maybe I'll try pick up the judo again but you know I can't take the um foreigner foreigner guys and thing too much you can't be too precious about it, otherwise you might as well just go back home, but um, still there's a limit. Anyway, that's my little account of um, doing judo in Japan. Uh, went on a bit longer than I thought it might, but I think I touched everything of importance. All right then, cheers.